Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with another Westworld Season 4 Episode 2 Breakdown, where I go through the episode in its entirety and break down any details that I think is important, any Easter eggs, anything that can get us to further understand the episode and what is to come. Now first I want to start off with the cold open, and we get to see a return of Clementine, and she's in some random foreign country, and as she walks through the market, she gets handed a flower. On her way back home, she takes that flower and she puts it in a vase of the same flower, but wilted at different stages. You get the vibe that this is a loop, that Clem is reliving a loop over and over again. And each life that she lives represents one of the wilted flowers in the vase. And then we get a surprise from William, dressed as the man in black. And he just wants to know where Maeve is. What's interesting here is that Clementine isn't in a character. Clementine seems to know who Maeve is and what is going on, so she's not beholden to a character or a story. And she told William that even if she knew, she would see William in hell before she told him, and William ended up killing her. Now, you could say that this is before the Clementine we see now. Maybe they moved Clementine to a new park, William paid her a visit, and wanted to try and extract information in this new park. But the fact that Clementine knows who Maeve is and isn't given a character or a storyline is also very strange. You could also argue that maybe this is a new park where they're using Clementine's same marble. And these parks, you could argue, are a bit different. In the past in Westworld, they always painstakingly cleaned and reset everything in the park every single day. But here, for example, we see the flowers that have wilted over time. With Dolores, we see that her cut still remains on her arm. It's these inconsistencies that show that maybe this is something new. But then we see Clementine given a new role. She's essentially William's assistant. She helps confront and keep the Justice Department at bay from meeting with William. The U.S. government really wants to have words with William because he's essentially becoming a domestic terrorist threat, and he's become very powerful. Not only that, Clementine helped kill the vice president's bodyguards, which allowed William to kill the vice president and replace him with a puppet host. Now this part of the plan makes total sense. William is a very powerful man, and in order for Charlotte to achieve her mission, she essentially needs control over everyone who is in power. That is the government, so they can deregulate and not get in the way of William and Charlotte's progression. And the main thing that stands in the way right now is William opening up his new park based on the Golden Age. Another thing the vice president said that I found interesting was he told William that the sun is not setting on you, my friend. And I think that's very true because it isn't. William is being held against his will in cold storage. To me, that also represents William going through the door and living forever. The sun will never truly set on William because he's not going to die as a human. He's going to be reborn into a host. So after that interaction, the Justice Department worker is very angry because according to him, the vice president was very happy with his talks with William because it is no longer the vice president. And Charlotte ends up telling him a part of her plan, that she spent most of her life being controlled by people in the shadows. She's of course referring to Dolores being held in the park and being done with as the people deemed fit. But Charlotte gives us a glimpse at her mission. She says it wouldn't be practical to replace all of you humans at one time. What kind of existence would that be for the hosts? Charlotte says that she wants her own people to flourish and find their own identity. And she has plans for humans. Now based on this statement, I believe that she wants the humans to be used to make the hosts flourish and evolve. And that's why we see the fly go under this guy's eye. They're clearly showing that there is an element of control where the fly brings insomnia, insanity, and a lack of control over your own actions. If she can take humans and put them in a park like the Golden Age, then she may want to put the hosts in as the guests. And the hosts basically have free jurisdiction to do whatever they want to discover who they could be. And that's what Ford always said. Ford said that people didn't come to Westworld to find who they are. They already know who they are. They want to find out who they could be. But I personally think that that's the one problem in Charlotte's plan. 
One aspect that brings hosts to consciousness is suffering. They need to relive their loops and they need to suffer in order to find their own center. And the ironic thing about that is she needs the humans for that purpose. Unless she wants to be the Judas steer and cause pain and suffering, like what Dolores did in previous seasons. But Charlotte does like to talk about her plan. She ends up waking up William, which is great to see that he's not dead. But she basically repeats her plan to William. She states that she is not going to kill humans and repopulate the world with a copy of herself. Charlotte thinks it's pointless to bring children into the world only to be consumed by jackals. When she says jackals, I assume she's referring to humans and them being uncontrollable, which would explain the fly. And she says that she wants to cut off their paws to ensure humanity can't hurt them again. What a great way to cut off their paws in introducing the fly and to control them. But the reason why Charlotte is keeping William around really is just revenge. She wants him to be in a prison of his own sins. And she brings up something that William said in the past. That winning doesn't mean anything unless someone loses. And that's why she's keeping William. She's keeping William so she can feel good about herself while she achieves her mission. And so far it seems like it's working. Through Maeve and Caleb's storyline, we learn that there is 249 hosts that have been printed and integrated in society, working for William and Charlotte. And that these people are the beginning of a new world order. They're essentially puppets to allow William and Charlotte to do as they please. So that's step one of what Charlotte is doing, replacing people with hosts. But then there's the new fly introduction, which is control. And we get a flashback at seeing how William used hosts to murder and replace the senator and the senator's wife. And Charlotte arrives, saving the wife, saying that she could be useful and she could help researching a new experiment, which she is referring to as the fly experiment. So they put her in the barn. And what we see with her reaction is that there is a type of insanity. She doesn't know what happened to her horses. She ends up delivering Caleb and Maeve a message from William, showing that there's an element of her that's being controlled. But then also you can see that she's mentally fighting back. She forgets the actions of gutting her own horse and killing her horses. She also asks them to let her die and save her. So it's clear here that the fly is almost like a parasite and the human brain is fighting against it constantly. And the hole in her head shows this black, corrupted, almost like the fly is killing, manipulating, and feeding off of certain aspects of the brain. But then Maeve and Caleb continue on their journey. And the first thing I want to say about them is they clearly have a past that they are not telling us about. For example, when they're in the car, they talk as friends who know each other well. And we didn't see that relationship form in season three at all. They were acquaintances. When they get into the opera onto the train, they know what each other drinks. They both order each other, the others drink, showing that there is definitely a history. Caleb asks if she wants to talk about the lighthouse. And Maeve recalls that she saved his life, referring to the flashback we see earlier. So it's these histories that we're slowly going to uncover within the show. Some of the timeline doesn't add up. They told us seven years ago the riots happened. That was the end of season three. But now Caleb has a seven-year-old daughter. If Caleb is actually going to have a daughter that's seven years old, his wife should have been pregnant during season three. So it doesn't add up at all. Plus, there needs to be time for Caleb and Maeve to have built a form of relationship that we're seeing in this season. So the timeline is not right. And I think it's very interesting that Caleb's daughter looks like she could pass for Maeve's. So I think there's a lot of open theories there. But finally, I want to talk about the similarities between Caleb and William. I think since the beginning, they've been wanting to show that there are definitely similarities. Where William is basically the very rich and wealthy outlier, Caleb is the outlier of the people. They've mimicked many scenes, like in season three when Caleb stumbles across Dolores, and he goes on an adventure helping her, just like William with Dolores. But here we find another parallel. It's Caleb's first time in the park. He was never able to afford it. He has a wife and a daughter at home. And he has an old host that we know approach him and try and bait him into hooking up with her, essentially. And in the beginning, William said no, because he had empathy for the hosts. Caleb didn't either. 
So we'll see if this park, this Golden Age park, could corrupt or change Caleb in any way. Right now he's living a mundane life that has no meaning to him. His wife and his daughter mean the world to him, but it's not his life that he would lead. William didn't find meaning for himself until he went into the park. And just like William, Caleb is finding meaning on his journey. Another thing I want to say is they completely consented to have their personal data used in beta trials. Obviously, we know that the park was spying on humans and using that and recreating them in the forge. But I think what Maeve and Caleb could discover in this park is all the hosts are actually mind-controlled humans using the fly. And that's why William had to kill the vice president to get approval for this park. In the first episode, they said that William is taking his money using holding companies and buying up vacant plots of land. I believe William is building many, many parks. He has the government in his back pocket, and he's not going to be using them as standard Westworld parks. He's going to be using them to refine the fly technology to take control of the humans. As Bernard said in Season 2, the Westworld park wasn't to refine the hosts. It was to decode the guests. And I believe Charlotte is now building parks that are designed to decode the humans and build up the hosts. But then we go to Dolores, and I personally think that this plan that Charlotte has built of these different parks reflects in Dolores' story. Because I believe Dolores is very, very far in the future and is living in a park. And her storyline has been about discovering the tower. She's stressing out about Peter Myers that he put all this responsibility on her. He said he thought it was the tower, but it was her. He told Dolores that she ruined his life, which is reminiscent to William and maybe other guests who entered the park. As soon as William met Dolores, his life was ruined because he finally found meaning in something and then realized that she forgot all of it. So it was meaningless. Her friend ends up telling her that Peter Myers donated a bunch of money to the Hope Center for Mental Health. Which this friend, to me, seems very useful. To the point where she's almost given a storyline to put Christina on this path. I think Christina's roommate is there for a reason. From a storyline purpose, to push Christina to achieve what she needs to achieve. But then on her way to work, she sees the homeless guy again, and he's talking about the tower. He asks if you can hear it. It's the song with no sound. It's killing them. He says there's noises coming. The one connection I can draw from this is that woman with the fly, we hear these noises. Which obviously freaks Dolores out when she sees a bunch of dead birds by her building. And that noises could hint to a corruption. The flies could be emitting a noise, a frequency. And if they tell us that, then we could also argue that the tower also emits a frequency that controls. Maybe the fly leaves something on the human brain and then it can be manipulated by sound. But then Dolores decides to go to the mental institution and we get to hear her pitch for Peter Myers. That Peter was depressed, he felt different than other people in the world. He started seeing things, imagining conspiracies. His wife left him. He lost his job and blamed it on the girl he was obsessed with. He stalked her and contemplated killing her. He spiraled out of control and got to a place he couldn't handle and killed himself. And first of all, this runs into a lot of parallels with a host achieving consciousness. They start seeing things. They start seeing things in their loops. They start imagining conspiracies like the maze. And they essentially go insane. And that same story, as I've said before, applies to William. He imagined conspiracies like the world was never real, and the most real thing he ever had was in the park. He lost the life that he built, his wife, his daughter. Because those didn't compare to the relationship he developed with Dolores and what he felt in that park. He ended up stalking Dolores. He ended up killing her multiple times to make her suffer so she was more real. And he eventually spiraled out of control in season three. So I think there are a lot of parallels here and it's interesting Dolores is being used for this. But all in all, I think Charlotte is using Dolores. If you look at Dolores as a character, she's written many stories. She completely changed William's character and turned him into the person he is today. The moment she met William, she changed his story. And then the moment she was reset and William saw her forget everything, she changed him again. 
she changed Bernard. Bernard was supposed to be based off of Arnold, and she made some tweaks herself, basically writing her own story and changing Bernard into the person he is today. But then Dolores arrives at the Hope Center. And first of all, we see blueprints for city buildings on the table. That could refer to plans of building the park or city that she currently resides in. She finds Peter's dedication on the building, and she's confused because he just died. But the reality is, is that this building has been dedicated to him for a long time, revealing that there's something in the timeline that is off, and Dolores is in a future-type world. And once again, she finds more drawings of the tower in the other room. So all in all, I think the tower is essentially the new symbol of the maze. They said in season one that Wyatt found the center of the maze and built a house and built a house in the center with walls around it. So nobody could reach the center but him. And that's what the tower is. The tower is the center of the maze that Wyatt has built, which is Charlotte. And Charlotte stands on top of the tower and controls all of the puppets below in their maze. So nobody can reach the center of their own self but Charlotte. And Dolores is being used, maybe because she sees the beauty in this world, or maybe because she has more experience than any other host in the park. Either way, I think Charlotte is puppeteering Christina to pull the strings to help her achieve her plan. But that is it for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What are your theories and what do you think is going to happen in the next episode? But until next time, I'll see you guys later.